Hello, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com and thank you very much for joining me today. I am just back from London, England from another amazing, life-changing quit drinking boot camp in Covent Garden, another sellout seminar. They always are. Uh, so listen, if you've been thinking about joining me for the day to deal with your problem drinking at one of my quit drinking boot camps, but you've been putting it off, do it today. Book your place because these things always sell out. So we've got Nashville coming up next on the 24th of February, 2019. Then I'm in Toronto, Canada on the 31st of March. And then it is Sydney, Australia in April. Go to the website, book your place now, stopdrinkingexpert.com. Today, I would like to talk about alcohol relapse, alcohol relapse prevention and recovery because I'm getting uh, quite a few emails from people asking about it at the moment. And it doesn't seem to be coming from people who have relapsed, but more people who've been sober for a few weeks, a few months, and they're panicking. They're thinking, but what if I drink? Is that a disaster? Is that the end of the road for me? Does that mean your system doesn't work for me anymore, Craig? So I just wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit. Um, look, in all, in all honesty, alcohol relapse is very common with this drug. I hesitate to say that because I don't want, I don't want you to loosen your grip on what you're doing. You know, if you're a few weeks, a few months sober uh, and you're following a very precise pattern uh, and maybe some of that, you know, discipline is driven by fear. I don't want you to relax and say the five most dangerous words that anyone will ever say. Just one drink won't hurt. Seriously, if you ever find yourself thinking or saying those five words, just one drink won't hurt, punch yourself in the face, slap yourself about the chops, because that is the last warning sign you're going to get before something very bad happens to you. All right, because I'm, I, I can scream this in your face and I, at some point you'll forget about it. Just one drink won't hurt is just the last thing you hear before you drink. And it's a disaster because it's not just one drink. It's not like, oops, there we go. Oh, I'm okay now. You, you're setting yourself up for 14 days of misery from the kick. All right. This process doesn't have to be difficult if you understand the three stages of my process. The first stage is called the kick because there is a physical addictive element to the drug. It lasts about 14 days. This is how alcohol manipulates you and keeps you in the loop of addiction. What it does is it uses stick and carrot to keep you dancing. So it will make you feel uncomfortable, then it will reward you for drinking. Go back to A, make you feel uncomfortable, reward you. Make you feel uncomfortable, reward you. And this is how it keeps you drinking. All right. Now, the biggest danger with alcohol is that we mislabel the withdrawal symptoms. When the drug is using that stick to get us to comply, we mislabel it. You see, with, with other drugs like heroin, the withdrawal from heroin is horrendously painful. You're under no illusion that you're going through withdrawal. You're shaking. You can't. You're, you're photosensitive. You, you, you're body temperatures all over the place. You have to basically go and lie in a dark room and stay there for a couple of days until you're out of the withdrawal. There's no doubt what's happening to you. The withdrawal from alcohol is actually so subtle that we label it incorrectly. We say that we're stressed or that we're feeling anxious or the kids are playing up and, oh, I just need a drink. That sensation of, oh, I just need a drink is actually us responding to the withdrawal of alcohol. Even as though we label it as a bad day at work or a bill in the post that we can't pay or the kids misbehaving or whatever our reason is. We certainly don't get that feeling generally and go, uh oh, alcohol withdrawal. We, we label it as something else. So what happens when you get that kind of anxious, slightly stressy feeling that you assume is coming from somewhere else, uh, is you pour a drink and you drink it and you go, ah, 
And you do that because alcohol has rewarded you by removing the withdrawal symptom. The problem is we get that ah feeling and we incorrectly say, alcohol helped me relax. <sighs> alcohol did not help you relax. All alcohol did was remove the pain that it put there in the first place. You are not more relaxed. You are just noticing the drop in tension from A to B. And that's very different to relaxing. Okay? So that's the first thing to be aware of is that, you know, alcohol is very devious and it's very good at what it, what it does. That's why three million people every year die from this drug, even as though we all say at some point, hey, I can stop anytime I like. So for that reason, alcohol relapse is very common. Okay, it happens all the time. There are some situations where I can almost predict when it's going to happen. There seems to be this looking back at our drinking lives with rose tinted glasses thing. So many people who quit drinking with my help, despite how many times I warned them that this is coming, after about six months sober, a year sober, they have the, <laughs> they have the thought that, hey, maybe I didn't have a problem at all. Because they spent so many years trying to deal with this problem on their own, trying to moderate their drinking un unsuccessfully. And it was such a battle. And it was such a hardship. And it was so full of frustration and disappointment. And then they come across my website and they, they stopped drinking overnight. It was so easy. That they get like six months a year away from drinking and they start thinking, well, you know, it was so easy to stop drinking. Actually, maybe I didn't have a problem at all. Maybe I can just have one drink. And that just one drink begins a, a learning experience that can take months. There are many people in my secret Facebook group who have quit for a year said those five most dangerous words, had one drink, and then spent three months trying to get back on track. And eventually they do, but it's, you know, that one drink, it's not worth it. So understand that relapse is common, uh, but it's, it's almost like you can prevent this a little bit if you're aware of some of the trap doors that are ahead of you. You will start making silly thoughts, you know, silly, notions that you didn't have a problem at all. Perhaps you're cured. You know, it's been a year and I've not even missed it. Maybe I'm cured. Maybe I should just have a drink just to test it and see how I feel. Uh, there's, you know, there's even situations where people do that. They go, I think I'm cured now. So I'm just going to have a drink, a glass of wine and see how it tastes. And then they drink the wine and they go, oh, it's disgusting. How did I ever enjoy this? And that makes them feel all confident and smug. You know, I don't even like it anymore. So maybe I can have one just to be social. <laughs> and the loop slowly, slowly starts building. And within a week or so, you're back to the level of drinking you were at at your peak. All right. So here's the thing. Alcohol relapse is common. It's not a disaster. It's not the end of the road for you. It doesn't mean that this system didn't work in the first place or it can't work again in the future. The, the little evil clown that lives in your head will tell you this. It will say, well, you know, Craig doesn't know what he's talking about. It's all rubbish. You might as well go back to drinking. It will tell you this, but don't give this drug more power than it deserves. You know, I think we put alcohol on a pedestal because we spend years worrying about our drinking, trying to control it, and we're, we're scared of this drug. We love it and hate it in equal measure. We, we can't imagine life without it, and yet we desperately want it out of our lives, and it has such control over us. You know, we spend all day thinking about, when can I have my next drink? It has this bottle of alcohol has so much control over us, we're afraid of it. We think, how, how can this this little bottle control me, a fully grown human being. It must be like a magic liquid. Don't give it more power than it's due. Look, alcohol is the rotting discharge 
that comes out of decaying vegetable matter. It's just the pus that oozes out of vegetables when they go bad. There's, no, <laughs> there's nothing special about this. God knows why someone, you know, once looked at a bucket of this sludge and went, I'm going to drink that. But they did. So, you know, alcohol actually is no more powerful than anything else. It's, it's all about your perception. For example, let's say that you make a commitment to go to the gym every day. And good as gold, you go every day for three months. And then one day you wake up and you think, oh, you know what, I, I'm not going to the gym today, I can't be bothered. And you don't go. And then all day you feel guilty and you feel sad that you did that. And, but you, all you would do is brush yourself down and, and go to the gym the next day, wouldn't you? You wouldn't come to the conclusion that the gym's broken. Oh, well, that's it. That's it for me. I can never go back to the gym now. That's it. I've screwed it. You know, we don't give the gym that power, do we? Even, you know, something like that's not addictive, like, you know, veganism. Let's say you decide to be a vegan because you love animals and you care about animal welfare and you want that to be who you are as a person. And so you make the decision to become a vegan and good as gold, you go three months without eating any meat. If then one day you buckle and have a bacon sandwich, that doesn't mean that veganism is broken for you and you can never be a vegan again because, well, you've just ruined it now. There's no point going back and starting again because you've ruined it. You wouldn't do that. You know, if, if you had that bacon sandwich and then you were, you were full of guilt and regret about doing it, then the next day you would just brush yourself down and start again with your vegan lifestyle, wouldn't you? And the same is true of alcohol. There may come a point where you drink. Don't turn it into the biggest disaster that's ever happened. You're going to give it far too much power. You just brush yourself down and you start the process again. If you're a member of my online program, go back to day one and you do the whole process again. Because the chances are, you know, if you went through the, the course once, you remember about 20% of it. If you go through it about five times, maybe you'll remember about 40% of it, something like that. So there's no harm in going back to the start and doing it all again and just refreshing yourself. I'll come to boot camp, you know, spend a day with me. I guarantee you, you'll get you straight back on track. But try not to worry about this too much. It, it may happen, it may not. I always tell people that, you know, don't make statements like, I'm never drinking again. Because how do you know? How do you know that you're never going to drink it? You might do. You might not. You're not a fortune teller. So don't make predictions. Stay in the moment. You know, the, the past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is this moment. And the only thing that matters is in this moment, you're sober. That's it. And your whole life will move along like that. In this moment, I'm sober. If you start making statements like, I will never drink again, you're just putting a load of pressure on your shoulders. You don't need it. So if you're currently sober and you're panicking, what if I drink? What if I relapse? A, stay out of the future. It's got nothing to do with you. Just be grateful. In this moment, you are sober. And every time you catch yourself making predictions of the future, just bring yourself out of it. Do a pattern interrupt. Change your state. Get your head out of the future because there's a very clever saying. It says, if, if you want to be sad, live in the past. If you want to be scared, live in the future. If you want to be grateful, live in the present. So I'm going to wrap it up there. If you need any more advice on relapsing or preventing relapse, then please get in touch with me, craig at craigback.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you would like to join me for a free quit drinking webinar today, go to the website and enter your email address, www.stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thank you. For